All right, so we're talking about the three different tools that allow us to conduct functional modeling. The first one is a use case diagram, and this provides a bird's eye view of the basic functionality of the different business processes of the new system. The second tool that we talked about were activity diagrams, and these, in a sense, open up the black box of each one of the business processes, which we've identified as use cases, giving us a more detailed graphical view of the underlying activities in that business process. The third tool available to us are use case descriptions. And this provides a way to more fully document, document the different individual actions within a specific use case or a business process. So it allows us to capture the interaction of the user with the system. It provides functionality from the user's perspective, an external perspective, and it allows us to identify different paths or scenarios through a single use case. So if you look in your book under figure 411 in your chapter 4, your textbook, we're going to see an example of a use case description. And a use case description is broken up into three sections. The first section is the overview information. The first five rows are the overview information. The sixth row indicates the relationships that this use case has with other use cases. And then the last section is the flow of events. So we're going to talk about each one of these sections individually. So a use case description is where we take a single use case off of our use case diagram, and we're going to provide more detailed information about it, just like we did on an activity diagram. So if we turn in our textbook to figure 4.4, we're going to see an activity diagram, excuse me, a use case diagram that we created for our appointment system. If you'll notice, we have a use case called Make Old Patient Appointment. And this is related to update patient information, and it is also related to manage appointments. I can tell because it has lines or associations, relationships to it. I can also see that it is associated with the old patient as well, as an act, the old patient actor as well. So this is the use case that our example details on figure 4.11 of your textbook. There is a use case description template that you can find in Chapter 4 of your Canvas course. And under Chapter 4 of Homework Assignment, our homework number 4, and also under Chapter 4 Reading Activity, you can find access to this particular use case description template. So let's talk about the, the items within the first section, the overview information. The first field, the use case name, is obviously the name of the use case that we are creating this particular description for. The ID is a field that allows us to uniquely identify this use case description over any of the other use case descriptions that we are creating. The importance level field allows us to indicate an importance level, a priority level on a scale of 1 to 5 or 1 to 25 or A through D or <clears throat> however we would like to prioritize our use cases. The primary actor field allows us to identify the person who is generally the trigger that causes this particular use case to be implemented or executed. The next field, use case type, there are several different types of use cases. The first type of use case is overview versus detailed. Overview use cases are created very early on in the process, and they are generally very generalized. As we gain through the refinement process, as we gain more and more understanding of our use cases, then it would become more specific and it would be considered a detailed use case. We see another category also called essential and real. Essential use cases describe only the minimum essential issues necessary to understand this functionality. And once again, as we continue through the refinement, the gradual refinement process, this is going to become more detailed and more real use cases. So a real use case goes farther, and it is implementation specific. Where an essential use case is implementation independent, that means it doesn't matter the platform or the language that I'm using. I can describe the particular activities in an activity diagram in a use case without necessarily requiring on a specific language. As the gradual refinement process continues, they become real use cases 
that describes the specific steps. So for us, we're going to have a detailed, essential use case. The next field is a brief description, and that is pretty much a single statement that describes the essence or the purpose of this particular use case description. And the next and the last field within our overview information is the trigger. And the trigger is what causes this use case to execute, the event that causes it to begin. It can be external, such as the patient calling on the phone to make an appointment, or the patient walking into the office to make an appointment. It can be a temporal trigger, which happens within the system. For instance, there is a flag that is tripped when a vehicle has reached its um, expected regular maintenance mileage. So they can be external or temporal. I would put the name of the trigger, what the event is that's causing this use case to execute. So let's go back quickly to our example, figure 411 in our textbook, and we can see that we are creating a use case description for an old patient, make old patient appointment. It has been given an ID of two and an importance level of low. The primary actor is the old patient. They will be the one who triggers this particular use case, and it is a detailed, essential type of use case. The stakeholders are the old patient, who wants to make some sort of an appointment or a change in appointment, and the doctor themselves is also a stakeholder. A brief description, we can read the brief description or the purpose or the goal of this particular use case, and then the trigger. The trigger is the patient calls or, for that matter, walks into the office in order to make some type of an appointment. So the next section of our use case description are the relationships. And the relationships explain how the use case is related to other use cases and to other users. So if I go back to my use case diagram that we see in our book, figure 4.4 .4 in our chapter 4, if you'll notice, make old patient appointment extends updated patient information. I see the relationship extends. It is also a generalization or inheritance from manage appointments. So if I go back to my example, I can see that there is an association with an old patient, that this particular use case is associated with an actor called old patient. I can also see that it extends update patient information, and it is a generalization of manage appointments. So if you remember the four associations that we have on our use case diagram, the four different associations that we have. The first type of relationship is an association. That just means that they are related, such as the make old patient appointment and the old patient are related. The second type of relationship that we see is an include relationship, which is right here. And an include relationship is broken out from a larger use case. So if you'll notice, the larger use case is make new patient appointment, and a piece or a part of that is creating a new patient. The third type of relationship that we talked about was extend. You can ex see ex an extend relationship between make old patient appointment and update patient information. Extend allows us to include optional behavior because we don't need to update patient information every single time we make an old patient appointment. That is optional that may or may not need to occur. And the fourth type of relationship that we see is generalization, which denotes inheritance. So make old patient appointment and make new patient appointments are inherited from managed patient appointments. So if I go back to my <coughs> figure 11, 411, I can see that this particular use case has relationships and association with an old patient. It also has an extends relationship with update patient information and a generalization relationship with managed appointments. So the second section, relationships, allows us to see the associations or the relationships that this use case has with other actors and other use cases. All right, the third section of the use case description are the flow of events. And there are three different types of flows. The first type of flow is a normal flow of events. And these are the steps that normally are executed in a use case. So the normal steps that are performed from start to finish in a use case 
as listed in the activity diagram. The second type of flow, a subflow, allows us to decompose the flow of events into a set of subflows in order to keep the normal flow as simple as possible. I like to think of it as method calls. Um, for all the programmers, you're familiar with a method call where you create a method that is outside of main and we can add some complex logic into a method call and it doesn't clutter up main. Instead, all I have to do is make a call to that particular method. So subflows, I could actually break these down into additional smaller use cases using the include relationships. Say for instance, create, make, or create an appointment, change an appointment, and a delete an appointment. These are all part of making an, say, an existing patient appointment, and I could break them into smaller use cases. I could include them as subflows in under the normal flow of events, and then just under the normal flow of events indicate that it is a call to another use case. Now the normal flow of events would be a numbered list. Step one, step two, step three, step four. And if I was going to indicate a subflow, a subflow would be associated back to a normal flow. So subflow, um, step one, flow A, flow B, flow C. The third type of flow is an alternate or exceptional flow. And this is one that doesn't happen often, but it needs to be considered. So it's not the normal thing, but it still happens occasionally. These alternate flows could also be broken out to separate use cases using the extends relationship. So these types of relationships are things that I um, can take into consideration as I am mapping out my use case description. So let's go back and look at our example that we see under figure 411 in our book. So we have a normal flow of events for making an old patient appointment. The first step is the patient contacts the office. The second step, they provide the, the receptionist with some information. The third step is if the patient's information needs to be changed, you're gonna, um, we're going to execute the update patient information use case. If The fourth step, if the payment arrangements need to be changed, we're going to call the make payment arrangements use case. And then finally, there we're going to ask what they are calling for. And then I'm going to have some subflows. If you'll notice in the subflows, I have subflow 1 to make a new appointment, subflow 2 to cancel an appointment, or subflow 3 to change an appointment, with a list of steps that would take place under that particular subflow. And the final step in the normal flow is that the receptionist provides the results, tells the patient what has happened. If you'll notice under the alternate flows, there are a couple of alternate flows. Under subflow 1, step Two, the receptionist tells the patient the desired appointment times with the available dates. An alternate flow or an exceptional flow is that that time is not available, so the receptionist has to give them alternate times. There is also another alternate flow under subflow one, step two. The patient chooses one of the proposed times or decides not to make an appointment. So this is our example of the different types of flows of a use case description. And we would detail those flows under the last section of our template. All right, so you can find that template under your Chapter 4 reading activity or your homework 4. That template is available under either one of those sections. Let me know if you have any additional questions. Thank you very much.